Hey guys, this last weekend we did uh, Lasting Love the forge and the fire, and we looked at the covenant and how important your and my relationship with God is. And my, the, my favorite part of that is just that God's grace was given before we even understood what it was all about. So God delivered the people from Aegis, Egypt, and Jesus, uh, he died on the cross before we understood what he was doing for us, and that grace was made available. Now, it's through that grace, it's the act of the covenant, the work of God that frees us and sets us free. Well, we talked in this process how we accept Jesus and he comes into our life and then we begin the process of being a disciple. And in the process of being a disciple, you and I learned how we need to read the Bible and we need to pray, build that awareness of the Holy Spirit speaking into our life. And then we, we learn a little bit more like our spiritual gifts and how we can serve God. And then we begin to, to take on, well, I need to have relationships with people. We get involved in small groups and we're doing all these pieces, but there's something that's still there that we may not have dealt with because it's kind of in the background. It, it just feels like part of who we are. And we said that's from our culture. It's from our family. It's from our upbringing. And we have these, these patterns and these ways. And we said, you've got to go back and use the cross, use the covenant with you have with God, and go into those areas and have him help you. So this is what I want to do real briefly is I wanted to make a list of areas that I've had to go back and look at in my life. I've had to go back and, and, and evaluate what was my family's way or what was the culture? I grew up in Tennessee. What was the culture around certain things just where I lived around these topics, okay? And did I want to reflect that as a Christ follower? And many times they were not. Many times it had nothing to do with me, okay? So here's, here's 10 areas. Um, Peter Cesaro taught me to think about it in this area. Uh, he's a, a pastor and, a, and an author. Uh, money, you know? Do you, do you and I look at money as our source of security or is it just a tool in our life? What, how did you view money and is it God's perspective? How about this, conflict. Was it okay to have a conflict in your family of origin or did you guys just stuff it down? We don't do that. Or were you screamers? See what I'm saying? Well, what's healthy? How should you be able to deal with conflict? Because guess what? Every relationship is going to have a conflict. And, and it's just no fun, but it's part of it. Sexuality. What was your upbringing on sexuality? What were the, what were the conditions for sexuality? And how was that uh, communicated? How do you even talk about it? When did you have your first conversation? Well, why is that important? You realize that God has designed sexuality to be something that unifies, okay, a, a couple in marriage, but it's also important for how we relate to other people because we show them respect by staying away in that area. But yes, giving people a high five, that's, a, that's cool, all right? How about this, grief and loss. Someone once taught me years ago that grief is whenever a relationship ends and it's against your desire. So it can be something like this. Your best friend lives on the street, you grow up with them, and then they turn 12 years old and their dad gets a new job, another part of the country, and that relationship is over. And that is loss. It's grief. You have to deal with losses in terms of you don't win every game. Because of course you're, I don't know, someone really great at a sport, but even they lose, okay? Even LeBron James loses every once in a while, okay? How do you deal with grief and loss? Number five, expressing anger. Do you know there are some things you should be angry about? Yeah, when people are abusive of other people, you need to be angry at that. Jesus got angry because people were misusing the temple of God. He said, my house should be a house of prayer and you guys are using it for your own personal gain. That's not right. There are some things you should be angry about. But sometimes we're angry and people are like, why are you angry? What are you upset about? Well, that's because we get angry and we don't realize there's something deeper inside. When, the last time, when was the last time you got angry? Ask yourself this question. Was it really appropriate? I'm sorry. 
People get angry on the highway. I saw a guy doing something on the highway today. Let's just say his motions were not godly and uplifting. All right. It wasn't about me. It was about the person <laughs> that had just <clears throat> passed them. Listen, anger should indicate what's going on inside of you. And you need to know, is that from the Lord or is that from some selfish hidden thing? Okay, family. What What is your family's uh, perspective on family? Like, are you nothing until you get married and have children? Well, that's really painful in your life because some of us are called to be single. That's right. Some of us are called to be married, but maybe we're not supposed to have children. We're going to live a different lifestyle. There's a whole lot of different ways to, to view what's going on in family today. And so number seven, relationships, all right? Some people say you can't trust anybody that's outside the family. Well, that kind of limits you, doesn't it? Especially if you're a single, if you're, you know, only an only child. Oh my gosh, I have to live with these three people for the rest of my life? Well, that's, that's not healthy either. So what kind of relationships do you need? I, in my life, I've always needed mentors. I've always needed friends. I've always needed coworkers. I have all sorts of relationships. What, what do those healthy relationships look like? What are the boundaries on them? And, and those kind of things. Then next, attitudes towards different cultures. Can I tell you one of the things my parents got right was my parents loved people from other cultures. I remember growing up, my parents, because they loved missions, whenever there was a missionary in town or someone from a different part of the world, they would invite them to dinner. And this is what my mom would do. She would say, would you cook us dinner from wherever it is you're from? I'll take you to the grocery store and you can buy anything you want to, all right? And I got to eat some of the coolest meals. I also got to eat things like uh, squid. And that was different. That's all I'm saying, all right? Success. What was your family's idea of success and how did you know when you were successful? Well, that is an important key. You've got to go into that. And then finally, feelings and emotions. What, what did your family say about feelings? And were you allowed to have feelings? Were you allowed to share your feelings? What were feelings? Were they a sign of who you are and what was going on in your life? Or were there something about feelings that made them negative. Go back and say, God, why did you create my emotions? Can I tell you my, my little theory on this? Some of you have heard me say it before. I think your emotions are like the gauges on the dashboard of your car. If you're feeling something, it's telling you something. In the same way, when that little light comes on in my car that says fuel level low, well, that's telling me something. In my emotional level, when I'm drained and I'm tired, my fuel level is low. What do I need to do? I need to fill up. Now, some of us, we bash out that gauge and say, no way, I'll keep going. I'll live on adrenaline. Give me a Red Bull, right? That may not be the healthiest approach to life. And that's what we're talking about. This is why your emotions become important. You don't ignore your oil engine light, I hope. You're going to blow up, man. Well, that's why if you're always getting angry. So think about your different emotions. You know, when was the last time I had a great laugh? If it's been a while, please do something about that. Listen, God designed you. He loves you. And sometimes we need him to heal those broken emotions, those broken patterns from our family. Now, you go through this as you notice something like your family was not good at communication. Go back and say, God, forgive me. I have a broken communication pattern because of the way my family communicated. Would you teach me, Lord, bring people into my life to help me be a better communicator with my family and my friends. Maybe you want to read a book on it and you let the Lord redeem that, redeem that area. And that's why Jesus went to the cross. So you could be healthy and you could be whole and you could be in relationship with people. Hey, thanks for your time. I love you. God bless you. Have a great day.